Hi, my name is Karn Erlinson, and I am one of the science educators at the Air Zoo. And what I want to show you today is a really cool experiment that you can do at home with just a few simple materials. We are going to extract DNA from a strawberry. So first, I want to give you a list of what you need to do this experiment, and then we'll talk a little bit more about the details. All right, so you need some dish soap. You need some table salt. You need isopropyl alcohol, 91% um, isopropyl alcohol. You can buy this in the first aid section of your local store. And we'll have put this in the freezer um, the night before. The other thing that you need is something to extract the DNA from. And what I have here is just a couple of frozen strawberries um, that I, you just need whole frozen strawberries. And I also have a little glass container. Um, if you don't have a fancy scientific beaker like this one, you can also use just like a juice glass or something that is clear that you can see through. That works really well. Um, I have some scissors. I have a spoon and I have a little coffee stirrer. So it's a really simple experiment. Um, it does not require a lot of fancy materials. So let me take a step back and explain what DNA is. So DNA is the molecule in your body, in every cell of your body, and in all living things. Here's a, a big blown up model of it. And I like to think of DNA as like a twisted ladder. So the sides of the ladder, in this case, black electrical tape. This is a sugar phosphate repeating chain. So it's sugar phosphate, sugar phosphate, sugar phosphate. And both sides. So the sides of the ladder are those sugar phosphates. The rungs of the ladder are um, bases and they pair with each other. So there's four different kinds and they're abbreviated with, with simple letters. So there's an A, there's a T. So A always pairs with T. There's a G and a C, and G always pairs with um, C. And so this, the rungs of the ladder are the coding part of the DNA. And what does it code? It actually codes all the instructions that your body needs to make everything. So it's a really important molecule in your body, and every single living thing has DNA, the same type of DNA. You could be an apple, you could be a zebra, you could be a flamingo. Every living organism has that same basic molecule. The code itself is different, but that same basic molecule is in all living things. All right, so let's get into the experiment. So what I've done first, I've made a solution. It's a mixture of water, a quarter cup of water, a half teaspoon of salt, and one teaspoon of dish soap. And that's in this cup here. So that's what I'm gonna call the lysis solution. And I have my thawed strawberry here. So it's in a Ziploc bag. The first step of the experiment after you've made your lysis solution is to smoosh up the strawberry. So we're gonna smash it with my fingers. I'm gonna get a little strawberry massage here. Just trying to make those pieces small, kind of making strawberry soup in the bag. All right, I wanna get most of the chunks smoothed out. So what we're doing here, so the DNA inside your cells is packed really tight. It's in a molecule called a chromosome. It's kind of like an X-shaped molecule. And I like to think of the chromosomes as being like suitcases for your DNA because six feet of DNA has to pack into your um, chromosomal suitcases in each cell of your body. So each cell has a huge amount of DNA, six feet and it's all scrunched into these overflowing DNA suitcases called chromosomes. So we first have to kind of mush up the cells and then we have to break them open further and that breaking open further process is called lysis. So I've sort of done some mechanical break up here. Now I'm gonna use the, the um, detergent that's in the soap to help me complete that process. So I'm gonna put my bag right here and I'm gonna use one tablespoon of lysis solution and put it into my bag like that. I'm gonna reseal the Ziploc bag and kind of mush it up again. And in this case, 
You don't want to be too rough with it because you don't want to get a lot of foamy bubbles. You just want to break it up a little bit further. So now the DNA is being released into the solution. It's kind of, the cells are breaking open and the DNA is sort of floating around in my strawberry soup. And I'm just gonna give it a little bit more of a scrunch. Okay, so now the next step that we need to do, we need to get rid of some of the junk. There's a lot of chunky bits that we wanna remove from the solution. So I'm gonna use this scientific filtration device, which is actually just a piece of cheesecloth rubber banded to a, a glass container. And I am going to trap the junk on the top and get some really good strawberry juice containing the DNA on the bottom. So I'm gonna cut the corner of my bag carefully. You wanna make sure you have a little bit of space in the top of your filter and then I'm just gonna pour it in. And you may have to do it in several batches because it might not all fit all at once. And I'm getting some nice clear strawberry juice at the bottom. It's kind of pink, it smells really good too. That's one advantage to extracting the DNA from something like a strawberry, it just smells delicious. All right, I don't need my Ziploc bag anymore, so I'm just gonna kind of put it over to the side. I'm gonna let it filter, it just takes a minute or two. And you can use a, a spoon if you want to kind of help the process along. I'm gonna sort of stir it a little bit. Look at how I have all the junk trapped on the top. And then the bottom, I have like a, a nice strawberry soup that has the DNA floating in it. And that's what I'm gonna use for the next step of my experiment. All right, this is the part that gets a little bit messy. So you're gonna carefully remove the cheesecloth from the top and just put it to the side. And this is the solution that I'm gonna to wanna to use. And I'm gonna tell you there is DNA in there, you just can't see it yet. So what I'm gonna to do to make it visible, this is the really fun part. I have um, that 91% isopropyl alcohol and I have put it in the freezer um, the night before to make it ice cold. I have about two tablespoons in here. Um, and what I'm gonna do is carefully pour down the side of my container so that it forms a layer on the top. I'm just slowly pouring it. And this part, um, depending on the size of the container you have, you might use a little more, a little less. The amount isn't as critical. Um, but what you'll see is a layer of the isopropyl alcohol on the top and the strawberry juice on the bottom. And then there's a, a the DNA is starting to come out of solution. It looks kind of cobwebby um, and a little bit white. And I'm gonna, that is the DNA. And you can see it kind of more of it coming out of solution and becoming visible. And now I'm gonna show you, I can kind of gather it up. I can gather it up on my coffee stir. This is the DNA that was in the strawberry. Look, it's kind of snotty but really cool. And at this point, if you want, you can kind of stir it around a little bit more and you can gather it up. Look, isn't that cool? Play with it a little bit. That is DNA. Isn't that amazing? And I wanna tell you, you could do the same experiment with other fruits. Um, strawberries work really nice because of the color contrast with the isopropyl alcohol and also because strawberries have a lot more DNA in each cell than some of the other fruits. But real simple and real cool. So the next time you're um, having a fruit salad, think about the DNA that's in the strawberries and all the other fruits and think about how it's not so different than the DNA that's in your body. Thanks.